This is international master Eric Kislik. Do you know what the most common opening in all of chess is? It's the Sicilian Nidorf. Do you know what the most dangerous variation in it is? The most dangerous variation is generally agreed upon as bishop g5. Typically, when I meet players who want to play the knight dwarf, they always say, what do I play against bishop g5? Do you have something there? What can you recommend? So here I have a pretty simple recommendation, and it's something that keeps tension in the position and does not allow any forced draws. So a lot of the main lines with e6 on move 6 are very, very drawish, so I have a slightly different suggestion that I've played myself. Let's skip through the moves. e4, c5, knight f3, d6. d4, threatening d takes c5 or d5. So black always takes here. Takes, takes, knight f6. Knight c3, a6, starting the basic position of the knight orf, where in many cases black would like to play the move e5, but in the case of bishop c4 or bishop g5, white has excellent control over the d5 square, so we're not going to play e5 then. So after bishop g5, I like the simple move knight b to d7. And the point is, in many variations, I just want to play normally with the move e6. But against f4, I have something slightly different in mind. So the first point of, is if they go bishop c4, we're basically taking play into a bishop c4 knight or variation where we can go e6, and if white goes queen to e2, we can simply develop on the queen side. We can go b5, the bishop goes back, and then we go bishop to b7. And here, the simplest solution is to meet castling with simply b4, and then just complete our development. Go bishop e7, threatening the e4 pawn, white goes f3, and then we can simply castle. And this is a typical sort of pawn structure where black is really not in any danger at all. So for example, if rook fd1, we can go queen a5, attacking the bishop on g5. If the bishop retreats, we can just play queen h5, and knight c5, and black has comfortable equality. So. One of black's plans here can just be to take the bishop on b3 and then go d5. For example, if queen e1, take, take, d5, e5, knight d7, attacking the pawn. After f4, we can play queen g4, and black has no problems. His queen is not in any danger here on g4, so he has no issues. So let's go back to f4. So after f4, the idea I want to play for is queen c7, and we have a really nice plan here. The idea is that let's say white goes queen f3. Here I want to play h6, bishop h4, and g5. This is a great move, winning control over the e5 square by getting the f4 pawn to capture on g5. So after takes, 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 I throw in the move queen c5, attacking the bishop. So the bishop retreats, and now I go knight e5. Knight e5, queen to e2, and knight e to g4, attacking the e3 bishop. So of course he doesn't want to castle queen side and allow knight takes e3, Queen takes e3, bishop h6, so he plays bishop g1. So I go bishop h6, and now white's king is a bit caught here. It's hard for him to find a move. So white starts off with g3, trying to go for bishop g2 and then h3. So I voluntarily go knight e5 with the idea of, of trying to play for bishop to g4. He goes h3, I go bishop d7. Okay. So white has still a very hard time completing his development, so it's not easy for him to even find a move. We've sacrificed a pawn, but we have excellent compensation for it. So after knight to b3, we go queen c7. We just retreat our queen. And after bishop d4, which looks like the most natural move, we can play rook c8. And here we have some pretty natural plans. One idea can be to just go b5. Also, we can go bishop e6. And also, we have ideas like knight h5 or rook g8, both attacking the g3 pawn. So, it's not that easy for white to control everything here. Specifically, knight h5 can be quite tricky. If he goes queen takes h5, we always have bishop d2 check. So this is a good illustration of black's dynamic chances here. And that's in the case of queen f3. So as you can see, the main thing here is just that you have some kind of active idea, some kind of plan for what you want to do. And as we can see in this queen f3 line, we go h6 and g5. It's a very powerful pawn sacrifice. Our pieces just jump to extremely active squares right away. Knight e5, knight e g4, bishop h6, knight e5, bishop d7, rook c8. As you can see, all four of black's minor pieces are very active. So let's look at queen to e2. So after queen to e2, which is becoming the main line nowadays, we just go e6, he castles, and then we throw in the move b5 on the queen side. So he goes a3 to stop us from playing b4. That's played in basically all of the games. 
So now I'm just going to play bishop e7, and my goal is going to be to throw in the move h6, and then throw in the move bishop to b7. And then I will have completed my development, and I still have ideas like h6, g5, or playing rook c8. So here, g4 is the main move. It's really one of the only active ideas for white to try. So after h6, there is one tricky line. White can play bishop takes f6 here. So if he goes bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight uh, d takes b5, he does get to take the d6 pawn and get three pawns for the piece, but we can simply go king f8, e5, bishop e7, and black actually doesn't have any real problems here. Let's say h4, knight to b6. Black has a pretty active position here, so no problems objectively in that case. So bishop h4 is the main move to be concerned about here. So bishop to b7, and so one interesting thing here is let's say white plays king b1, just trying to move his king to a slightly safer square, and we go rook to c8. So now, if rook to g1, we can go for g5, which is what I was aiming for before. And now we have a nice little trick. Take, 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 and queen b6. Now we have all sorts of active ideas. We have all sorts of ideas like rook takes c3. In some cases, we have ideas like e5. So here, queen e1 is the best move, and we simply take on c3. And the idea is if he takes with the queen, we have knight takes uh, e4, winning the bishop on g5. So he has to take on f6, to solve the problem of his bishop on g5, we take back, queen takes c3, and there were a lot of games played here. If we look at this position, 93 correspondence games played after, after this. And it's very unlikely that you'll actually get to play out um, you know, 25 moves of this actual variation, but it's simply good to be aware of what the main line is. So the main line is to go bishop f6, c3, and then rook takes h2. And here the main try that white went for was g5, and black just simply goes knight takes g5. So if we pause for a moment to look at the material situation, we can see that black has the bishop pair, black has actually a relatively safe king, and he also has two pawns for the exchange. So all things considered, materially he's not in any danger here. So as long as white doesn't have anything devastating, black's going to be fine. Queen g3, rook h6. Queen to e3, and here we can just go queen c5, making sure everything's nice and safe. Bishop g2, trying to challenge our b7 bishop, and we can simply exchange and go queen to d5. Here we even have ideas like e5 in some cases, because of the d1 rook. So queen to g1, and here we can simply take on d4, pawn takes, and knight to f3. So if he just goes queen to f2, our king is quite safe on d7, and I was just illustrating this as a sample line. There are, of course, some possible sidelines here, but this was the most important line to show, just to kind of illustrate what black's trying to aim for here. So, as we can see in this actual variation, black has very good compensation for the exchange, and essentially he's playing active moves on every single move. So, fortunately, black has, has perfectly good chances here. So, if bishop g2, here, the new move is to play queen c4. Other people had played rook to b8 in the past, but queen c4 is a stronger move. And the idea is if he moves the queen out of the way, we can play the powerful b4, and here we have a huge attack down the b-file. So after queen c4, queen takes c4, b takes c4, h3, defending the pawn on g4, we can just go knight c5. So now we're attacking the e4 pawn. White simply goes rook h1, and we go rook c8. So we're covering the c4 pawn, in, for example, in some cases, we might be able to actually get some activity of our own with g5, like before. If bishop f2, for instance, we have g5, winning the fight for the e4, e5 square again. So we have knight fd7 and then knight e5 after that. And if king to b1, we get to exploit the undefended bishop on h4 with knight f takes e4. So white plays f5, we go e5. And the point here is, again, he has to... Uh, has to be a bit careful, so he plays bishop takes f6 first to solve the problem of his undefended bishop, and he also wants to fight for the d5 square. Bishop takes f6, so here a nice point here is if he goes knight d e2, we can play bishop h4 and king to e7, and black already has a pretty big advantage. So he has to play accurately here with knight to f3, and then we just go simply bishop to e7. And this is kind of an instructive position. The knight on c5, is slightly in the way, so we're probably going to play knight d7 on the next move and maybe go knight b6 or maybe go knight f6. So for instance, if knight to d5, we can go knight to d7, and then if rook to e3, we can just retreat the bishop. So here, for instance, if rook c3, 
we have takes, takes, knight of six, and then we can play king to e7. So here black equalizes pretty easily. And if bishop to f1 attacking our c4 pawn, we can just go knight d7. So here we have all sorts of active ideas. I mean, some ideas like rook c5 and knight b6. You also have ideas like just going g6 and maybe trying to open things up with, with g takes f5. So here, knight d7. And one idea for white, for instance, if, if bishop e2, rook c5, h4, knight b6, he can go for g5. But after we play this, let's say rook g1, a5, g6, knight a4, there's not actually any real danger for black here. If g takes f7, check king takes f7, the king is perfectly safe. So the most challenging line is to play f6. And this is trying to sort of disturb white's harm black's harmony a bit. So after knight takes f6, knight to d2, fortunately we get to play the move h5. So after h5, g5, we just go knight h7, attacking the g5 pawn. So if h4, we have f6, attacking g5. If g6, we drop back with knight f8. And if knight takes c4, knight takes g5, we give back the pawn on d6, take, take rook c6. And if he goes rook d5, here, he's threatening the e5 pawn, so we simply go f6. And our threat now is to go rook takes c3, so he probably has to play something like rook ed1 or drop his rook back. But this is a pretty simple, straightforward way of playing against bishop g5, which doesn't allow any draws, keeps a lot of tension in the position, and kind of keeps the play pretty sharp. So I can definitely recommend this to anybody who's playing black in the night orf, that this is a very good way to play for a win. And if you like the content, then consider subscribing. Thanks.